Hello there. Welcome back to Cuppa and Cards. My name is Renee Olson. I am the News River Witch and we are doing episode eight of the uh, Confessions of a Modern Witch vlog. It is the 23rd of August and boy has it been a long one already. My goodness, I cannot even begin to tell you how long this week has been. I have my Rubios. I am ready for the day. How about you? Are you ready for your day? Today we are going to talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart and probably close to yours too, at least on the top of your head anyway. We are going to talk about hair and the spiritual significance of hair. Um, we're going to talk about um, if your hair is a conduit to energy, um, does it have a deeper significance more than just how it looks or how it feels? Um, so sit down, grab your tea, and let's have a quick chat about it. Okay. So is hair spiritual? Is it cultural or is it just aesthetic? What, what do we think about that? There are many, many opinions about hair. Um, as someone who has had everything from a pixie cut to waist length dreadlocks, I can tell you that people have a lot of opinions about hair. They want to tell you who should have long hair, who shouldn't have long hair, who should have dreadlocks, who shouldn't have dreadlocks, who should have blonde hair or brown hair, or if you should have hair at all. Everyone has an opinion about it. What we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna demystify and we're gonna mystify a little bit. And if you hang out to the end, I will give you a ritual that you can do to help bring some energy back into your life through your hair. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is different culture, culturals and the different cultural aspects of hair. Um, everything that I'm going to talk to you about related to these specific cultures are through research that I've found over years of studying this on the internet. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak with individuals about hair, sometimes in group settings, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one. Um, and it's all directly related to what's been told to me. Um, I do not claim to be an expert on these cultures, um, and I do have notes in front of me. For those of you who may not aware, I do, um, I do, I am neurodivergent, so um, it helps me to keep a list of things um, that we can talk about. Otherwise, it'll be three hours from now, and we'll be talking about something entirely different, and you'll be looking at your watch going, what on earth is happening? So this just keeps me on point. It may be distracting. I do apologize ahead of time, but I do want to call that out so that others out there who may also need to have the, the notes to help reinforce or keep them on track will see me doing it. They'll feel comfortable, and they'll be able to do it as well. Um, that is my kitty cat crying. She is not in danger. She's just loud and moody and she likes it whenever she can hear her voice on the recordings. Okay, so we're gonna start off talking about ind indigenous cultures. So when I refer to indigenous cultures, I'm going to talk about those ones that I know of locally here in Eastern North Carolina, as well as um, the research material that I've done on the topic. Um, when we look at Native American cultures, many of them view hair as being sacred. They see it as a direct link to their ancestors. They see it as a spiritual strength. They also see it as a connection to the natural world. Um, they also understand or they also um, have rituals associated with cutting of hair and that's to mourn you know, either as a, a source of mourning or as a life-changing event. Um, in here locally, um, over an assorted time frame, um, God, I want to say it was a long time ago, but it wasn't. It's as recently as just last year, um, there was controversy around um, boys going to school 
um, and being told that their native hair was inappropriate because it was too long. Um, and they needed to have their hair cut like a boy. Um, so they were being, um, they were being singled out because their hair didn't fit their gender, um, according to this particular school that they had attended. So here, um, in Eastern North Carolina, we still have, um, some bias related to how the, uh, the native cultures here wear their hair. Another culture I want to reference is the Hindu, the Hindu culture. Um, in Hindu tra traditions, there is a ritual con called tonsur, um, and this is a shaving of the head, um, and it's supposed to be an act of humility or a deep devotion. Um, it is a, a ritual believed to purify the soul um, and to um, seek divine blessings. Um, Hinduism is very similar to um, other uh, religions of that area. Um, specifically, I can uh, relate to Buddhism. Um, in Buddhism, I studied uh, under Thich Nhat Hanh, um, and the Zen master um, laid out a course of what the monastics would do below, uh, who studied below him, um, or studied with him, I should say. Um, and they had a ritual when they would commit or they would become Buddhist, they would shave their heads. Um, I do follow a Buddhist path. I am not someone who would shave my head, I don't think. Um, it's not come up to me as being something that I would do. Um, but I do respect that is something that a path that they would take. Um, similar, um, in that it is a spiritual hair, uh, Sikhism also looks at their hair. Um, but in their case, it's a divine gift and it should never be cut. So it's one of the five K's, which is Kesh. Um, and it is uh, one of the things that when they're baptized as Sikh, that they would um, respect their hair as a divine creation of God. African culture has a similar aesthetic in that their hair is, can be anything from tribal affiliation to a social status to um, spirituality. Um, and it also can have, specific hairstyles can have specific meanings for specific events. So um, each one of these uh, particular styles may be directly, directly related to a specific ritual or a ceremony. Um, and, and then it just varies across regions. Um, another note I want to make is related to American culture. And when I say American culture, of course, I'm using that term very loosely because I do believe that American culture is really a amalgam or a mixture of a lot of cultures because when we think about how America came into being, it was a bunch of people who either wanted to get away from where they were or were dragged away from where they were or who were thrown out of where they were and all put in one place. And um, I, I'm gonna date myself here, but the American melting pot, do you remember that? Yeah, I'm just a bill, I'm only a bill. Yeah, Schoolhouse Rock, right? I remember all of those and I was raised in that culture. And I always felt like that we were all one, right? We were all here, we were all in a position to where we could um, learn from each other. And I really always felt that way. So I, and in our, in this area that we have here in America, um, we don't hold that spirituality to hair like so many other cultures do. Um, our hair is more looked at, I think, as, as a sense of pride, or you could say a sense of strength if you wanted to go back to the whole Samson, Samson and Delilah situation. Um, but it's looked at as a, a source of pride. So what they do is they try to break you. So what here for a symbol of punishment or rebellion or things like that, um, hair is cut, right? So when we think about um, people who go to prison, right? A lot of times they'll cut their hair off um, as a way to make them conform to the, the standard that they have in place. Another example of this is going to be in the military. Um, everyone has the same haircut, you know, so there's no one special. 
You're, there's nothing special about you. Everyone has to conform and look the same. And frankly, I think that's one of the reasons why I try to do so many different things with my hair. I've had everything from a pixie cut to waist length dreadlocks. Um, so I, I think that because of that culture of you have to do what you're told or you must conform that we have here in the United States, um, that's the reason why I feel the way I do. Um, and, and while we're on the subject of dreadlocks, um, the Rastafarian culture, for example, um, they looked at their dreadlocks as being more than just a hairstyle. It symbolized a covenant with God and a rejection of materialism. Um, the dreadlocks were a representative of a lion's mane and was a, per it was a reflection of the strength of the Lion of Judah. Um, I was not aware of the Lion of Judah part um, until recently. I think it was uh, about two weeks ago when I started doing the research for this, uh, this video. Um, so I found that very interesting. In my own spiritual practice, um, I am a, a devotee of the goddess Hecate. This is one of my altars. Um, I, uh, I am also a key bearer for the covenant of Hecate. And um, as part of my path, the first step before key bearer is torch bearer. And to become a torch bearer, there's a lengthy process you need to go through. It has a significant amount of reading and study and you have to be mentored and so forth. Um, and for that work, um, as I was going through all of that reading process, I came across something in the PGM, um, which is the Greek Magical Papyri. Um, it was verse 2785-289, which said, her hair is made of snakes. And for some reason, that just hit home with me. I, I was reading through all of the, uh, of the other materials related to you know, her presence and her strength and the darkness associated with her. And I, it just came, I came to a realization that for me, her imagery was that she was of a black goddess or a black woman, whether she be Nubian or Moorish or whatever nationality we put on that idea. I mean, we know her as a Titan, um, but to me, I felt that that when it said her hair was like snakes, that meant that she had dreadlocks. And in order for me to focus my energy and devote everything I could, I needed to grow dreadlocks in order to be more connected to her. And for those who don't know, dreadlocks are no joke, okay? First of all, they are extremely heavy. Um, they are very time consuming to take care of. People who think that, oh, you just let your hair knot up and it's, it's laziness and they smell. Let me tell you something, dreadlocks take a lot to take care of. Um, there is crocheting and, and, you know, pulling in of the loose hairs and treating it with coconut oil and, you know, wearing silk hats when you go to bed and covering your hair with wool when they're baby dreads you know, to kind of encourage that um, hair growth and that lock for those dreads. Um, it was a very powerful experience for me. Um, not only from the care perspective, because I was someone who always felt like I didn't deserve care. Um, so from just that self-care, learning that I needed to take care of myself for my own spiritual well-being, as well as the, the following of the, of the goddess that I was following, um, I also learned that, you know, there were things that you needed to take care of, you know, roll in your dreadlocks, all of the things that went along with it. Um, it was very enlightening for me. Um, I experienced a lot of, um, I won't say discrimination, um, but uh, because I don't want to put what I experience on any way, shape, or form com comparable to a person of color who may have experienced the same or who definitely experienced the same type of situation. Um, my experiences were um, mainly from other uh, white people um, where they would make rude comments about my hair. They would um, make, you know, rude comments on photos on the internet telling me that they were sure it smelled or that they, 
you know, I probably had mold in my hair and all of this craziness that went along with it. Um, just as much as I experienced that negativity, I also experienced a lot of positive feedback from other, um, from other people who really wanted to sit down and understand why I was growing my hair in dreadlocks and, and what the reasoning was behind it. Um, it was definitely something that I would maybe not necessarily do again, um, but it is something that I find, I found very beneficial and I learned a great deal about myself and about other people by doing it. So does our hair hold any special powers, right? So think about your hair. Is it, does it help have memory? Does it, do you, does it know about, there, there are many cultures out there um, that believe that not only does your hair hold um, on to your energy, but it also holds on to the energy that you've had through your whole life. So your hair follicle, right? It's a living thing. It, this end part, it started way up at the top of your head, right? So it's been with you the entire time. So all of your energy is in this very last hair strand. Um, it holds all of those memories. It holds all of the energy that you've experienced as well as um, the energy of the ancestors. Some cultures believe, I believe it was the Egyptian cultures believe that you could pull memories from the atmosphere around you, from the sun and the stars. You could pull that energy into you and channel that energy so that you knew what the knowledge of the gods, if you will. In native cultures, um, I think it was uh, in the native cultures, the Lakota, um, for example, they believe that if you cut, you could cut your hair as a sign of loss or mourning, right? So when you cut that hair, it will break that connection and it will be a sign of sacrifice. So let's say someone important in the tribe had passed away um, or who had, you know, there was some, some loss in their group, they would cut hair and give that as an offering. Um, the act of growing the hair intensified that spiritual energy and was a connecting or a conduit for the energy of those who passed away. In some modern uh, new age wellness and holistic uh, groups, they believe that the hair above your, it creates an energy above your head that connects your body from your, your third eye chakra up into the outer chakras and those higher level chakras. And it brings that energy directly into your body. Um, there are several groups also that believe that you can reconnect to missing information by having your hair long. I can definitely say that since my hair has grown out, I definitely feel more connected to the natural world. I'm more in tune um, with the things that are around me. Um, I am a vegan. Um, I do, I am whole food plant-based. Um, I, I, when I, I like to add that in because Oreos are vegan. <laughs> so I'm not that kind of vegan. Um, if you are that kind of vegan, good on you, you know, I think it's great that you eat cruelty free, um, but keep doing that. Um, I personally am vegan for a, uh, for health purposes. Um, so I tend to eat more plants um, instead of packaged foods. Um, I found that in that, in doing those things, it has helped me become a more centered person. It's also helped my hair a great deal. It is healthier than it's ever been. Um, it is, I was going very gray um, before I moved, I switched to veganism and my hair has pretty much returned to its natural color, which is extremely interesting. Um, so now, how do we, how do we develop? I told you earlier, I was going to give you some tips on how to develop this energy and how to strengthen that energy in your hair. Um, not magic is huge for this, right? I probably shouldn't do it on the side with the mic. Let's do it on the other side. Um, not magic is huge, right? So just a simple three strand braid is wonderful for imbuing energy into your hair. Um, for those who don't know, it's a simple over under technique. You just take one and put it over and un under the center strand. So you just rotate back and forth until you bring that hair together into a single braid. 
And as you're bringing that hair together in the braid, you're gonna focus on the energy that you wanna put into that hair. If you're doing love magic, maybe you wanna put some rose hips on your hands, maybe you wanna put some rose water. Um, you, if you're doing a cleansing spell, there's nothing wrong with a little Florida water on your hands. Um, I don't recommend putting any of it directly in your hair, but just coat your hands with it and just repeat this interlocking braid all the way to the bottom of your hair. When you get to the bottom of your hair, you just put a little tie on it, and now your knot magic is all set and ready to go. Um, when you're doing this braiding, you're also able to, um, you could recite a, a spell if you wanted to, a, a binding spell, or maybe a spell break, you know, maybe you want to separate from someone. You can do the same thing with that kind of energy. Um, but once you're doing this, you put it in, maybe it's a particular moon phase, uh, bind your hair this way and you can sleep on it overnight. And like I mentioned, what I do with my cards is I'll take this, um, this little hair tie that I keep around my cards and I'll tie my hair with it. And as I'm just putting the hair tie in, this will be um, where I can uh, focus that energy on maybe increasing my empathic abilities. Maybe I want to focus on um, understanding or healing or opening up of a chakra. I'll put that information on there and I'll put that in my hair tie. And I'll sleep with this overnight. And once I wake in the morning, I'll take that hair tie off, right? So I'll just slide it off. And then I'll take it and I'll put it on my cards, right? So here's my deck. I'll put it on my cards, twist it around. And now I'm imbuing my deck with that same energy. So that's one way that you would do that. Another way that you could do this is with hair care. Um, I, as I've mentioned previously in other videos, I'm studying Ayurvedic medicine. Um, and one of the things that they talk about is massaging the scalp with herbal oils. Um, you can also, as you're massaging it, you're, you're massaging also your being and your wellness and all of that energy within. Um, you can coat the hair with those herbs. Um, you can also use, uh, one thing I found out recently, which is very good for your hair, is um, aloe. Um, so sometimes I'll go in the morning, I'll put aloe on my hands and rub it through my hair, just as a way to not only treat the hair itself to keep it nice and silky, but also to rub it into your scalp and just stimulate um, all of that energy that you have within. One of the last ways I think that you can, well, actually, there are two ways. So let's say, um, as I mentioned, the braiding hair is a ritual. You could do a ritual in front of your altar with your hair, um, as well as even cutting your hair. So we talked about the uh, monastics who shave their head. We talk about native uh, culture who take off a piece of hair and will donate it. Um, I'm sure we've all seen the... Um, the story where the man sells his, um, what did he sell? It's the gift of the Magi. Do we remember? I can't remember. He sells one product that he has um, to buy combs for his wife and she cuts off her hair, which she would use the combs for to buy something for him. Was it a watch? I can't recall. Do you remember? Put it in the comments. Um, maybe we'll look that up and see if we can remember what that was. Um, but yeah, now we know hair, hair is not just an aesthetic choice. It has energy. It holds onto your memories. It, it connects you with your natural world. It connects you with your ancestors. Um, do you have experience with this? Have you, have you been able to find a connection with your hair? Do you do not magic? Tell me about it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. So now we're going to do a single card pull. I'm pulling this from the River Witch Oracle. Um, this deck is available on my website if you're interested in picking up a copy. Here's our card for today. I'm going to hold that up for you for a second. This card is Grits. Its keywords are Nourish, Simple, and Foundation. So when we think about this energy from this card, and we're thinking about this nourishing, foundational energy, we're thinking about this simple way of life. Take the time today to reach out to someone else. Take the time to not only nourish them, but nourish yourself. Look inside to see what you need. Be that person that you needed when you were a child. Be that for someone else and be that for yourself. 
I hope that you have enjoyed our little talk today. Remember to leave me some comments. I'm interested to see what you have to say about hair magic. Um, I am going to be doing a single car pull tomorrow, and then next week we will have another vlog. If you have any ideas, any questions, if you want me to talk about something specific, feel free to leave that in the comments. I want to I wanna talk about the things that you want to talk about. Um, have a glorious day today, and I will talk to you soon.